Hello and welcome back, your lovely faces, to another video here on the channel. Well, today we're going to take a look at something which Brian Cox, he just keeps popping up about Johnny Depp. He just keeps has to do it because he knows mentioning Johnny Depp at this, at this time in his career, which he shouldn't really have to give this kind of, this kind of, you know, motion because... The guy's a very successful actor, you know? He's got a very, very big hit TV show. He's winning awards for it and everything else. So he shouldn't really have to do this. And he, like I said, he's a, been a big actor. A lot of people who follow Johnny Depp don't really know because they haven't really seen those films. Because, again, those films are not for them. But, you know, look, I've said in previous videos about this guy. He's played some of my favourite characters. And just seeing what he says here is just like... Dude, you just need to just chill on all of this now. So, this is what we got. Brian Cox says he regrets calling Johnny Depp overrated. I went for the easy joke. Why is it an easy joke? Why? Personable, though, I'm sure he is. He is so overblown, so overrated. That's what he said in 2021. And the good thing is, this was 20 minutes ago. As you can see, it is uh, 20 past 11 in the morning for myself. So he has admitted that he regrets calling Johnny Depp overrated in his autobiography. The actor who plays Logan Roy on Succession made comments about Depp as well as others in the industry in his 2021 memoir, Putting the Rabbit in the Hat. Personally though, I'm sure he is, he's so overblown, so overrated. That's why he wrote to the former Fantastic Beasts star acting. During his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, so last night, he said that in hindsight he is remorseful about his harsh words. When asked by uh, Kimmel whether he'd heard from Johnny Depp's representatives since the book was published, he jokingly replied, I heard a lot from his, they call it a fan club, but it's some kind of CIA agency that works on his behalf. Okay, a little bit funny, but uh, it's not exactly like, oh my god, come on, you know that sort of thing. But then he did tell uh, Kimmel he's made an effort to rectify his remarks by including a note in a later version of the autobiography. I've written an ad enum to this book. It's going to be published in paperback in the UK. So I will be keeping an eye out for that. I want to see what he puts down. Because that is uh, going to be very, very interesting. I just thought I was being a bit harsh. You know what it's like. You go for the easy joke. And I went for the easy joke. Well, why do you go for the easy joke? It's your autobiography. No one asked you about Depp, you know, they're like, oh, what do you think of Mr. Depp? You know, it's not that sort of thing. That was what happened, and I sort of regretted it, because I'm not like that normally. I was just being a bit glib, a bit flip. Later in a conversation, he did a uh, Kimmel ask Cox whether he thought actors believed they were overrated themselves. And this is what he said, I think they do. I think a lot of times actors think they're overrated, and some think they're underrated, he reasoned. Yeah, Jesse Smollett thinks he's underrated and he thinks he's amazing. Let's put it this way, most of them think they're not rated at all. And that's actually very true with a lot of uh, these uh, the actors. Mostly, like we're saying, with the, uh, you know, Jesse Smollett uh, thing. And with that, I was like, you know what? That's interesting. Because obviously a lot of stuff has happened and Brian Cox, I really do think he just jumped on the bandwagon at the time because obviously Johnny's been in a lot of stuff recently, a lot of press. And I think he just thought, I'll just jump on this and we'll just, uh, no one will say a word because everyone's attacking him at this time. But we're going to go into uh, story number two today instead of two videos. I thought I'd just put these both stories into one and it's actually really sad because it's this. Johnny Depp's legacy is getting demolished. So, with that, I'll just blow it up for you. It's, when I first read this title, I was like, oh my god, what the hell have they said now about him? What's he doing? But it's not. What is actually going on is they're actually getting rid of the Viper Room. So, in the 90s, there was nowhere cooler in LA than the Viper Room. Founded by Johnny Depp and his 21 Jump Street co-star Sal Jenko, the space was not only a bastion of incredible rock music. For example, in X6, star Michael Hutchins played his last public gig there before self-deleting, but was the backdrop for all manner of celebrity parties. It was. Sadly, River Phoenix as well, after one particular racist night, 
Uh, actor River Phoenix infamously did this on the sidewalk outside of the club not too long after it opened. This is what Deadline have shared details of some of the iconic acts that performed there. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, the opening night band. What an opening night band, like, you know, that's amazing. Johnny Cash, Neurotic Outsiders, a super group comprised of Duff McKagan, Steve Jones and Iggy Pop. Duff, you know, oh, man, that would have been amazing to see. You know, Hole, The Strokes, Keanu Reeves' Dogstar, The Cult, Slash, Juliet, Lewis and the Licks, Concrete Blonde and Tenacious D. All crowd on the small state. You know, what a lineup all that is to have them in one bar over the course of the years. Now, after its storied almost 30-year history, the Viper Room is being torn down so a developer could construct a 12-storey mixed-use structure. This is what I hate. We got this happening here in Cardiff as well. You again, iconic places which held some of either the greatest, greatest writers, poets, all this kind of stuff. You know, some of the greatest rock bands have come in and done like a set here and there. You've had the comedy clubs as well, where I always remember when I worked my last uh, major job, when um, at the comedy club in Cardiff, we had Robin Williams. He just turned up out of the blue. Just turned up. It was in... I believe it was 2012, it was 2012, yeah, 2012, he turned up, and he's just like, I'm visiting the area, because I'm shooting a film just down the road, do you mind if I tell some jokes? When you got Robin Williams, and he's saying, can I go on stage for 10 minutes, you fucking put him on stage, and it was just, it was just, everyone was in awe, it was, obviously he was fucking hysterical, but it was just like, because to me, I grew up with Robin Williams. Everything that I did as a kid, Robin Williams. You know, you've got Hook. You've got, um, obviously you've got Toys, Mork and Mindy. You had Patch Adams. Well, I'm not really a fan of Patch Adams. Aladdin, you know. And it was just like, oh my God, it's Robin Williams. And he's about 30 feet away from me. You know, it was that sort of thing. And these places, they got so much history. And they're being knocked down. For what? Oh, yeah, we are just for different offices or a car park. Wow. That's what you want to do. But it does go on to say that after a deadline. Uh, since initially proposing a redevelopment of the site in 2018, Silver Creek, the developer, has taken public input on the project. The design was created in partnership with Miami architecture firm, whatever that is. The new business will include a hotel, 26 condominiums and 8 income-restricted housing units. Cafes, stores and a Viper Room entrance will be part of a two-storey platform at street level, while the hotel will rise up to the fifth storey, according to the plans. So at least they're going to keep the doorway. Yay. Residents will reach the tenth storey, where a restaurant and bar will offer an outdoor terrace with skyline views, according to the development company. But then it goes on to say, original, uh, original memorabilia from the Viper Room will be displayed in various areas of the new building. Deadline did not provide a timeline for the completion of the new project, but did, not, did note that the Az Costume Store, Barcode Barbershop, the Liquor Market, Taki Sushi and Amarone, excuse me, Amarone Restaurant are also included in the real estate parcel. So it's basically the entire block. It sucks, and obviously just says about Johnny Depp and uh, what's going on with uh, going on in the courts at the moment. But yeah, it, that just sucks, you know. Seeing these places, these iconic places. Again, here in the UK, myself, I know the Viper Room because of River Phoenix. And obviously, all the bands that have played there, ones who have said some of their most intimate gigs have been in the Viper Room. And they're the best ones because it's small, intimate, and it's not thousands and thousands of people. And when they get rid of it, something like this, it just sucks, you know? But that's what we do have to, uh, today, ladies and gentlemen. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates. And I'll see each and every one of you soon.